Condenser or capacitor mic. This is a mic that really hears the high frequencies very well because it is basically an electronic uh, component. They call it a capacitor mic because the way it's made up is the same uh, way a capacitor is built. So you're actually vibrating and changing that signal. So you're going to get subtler response. Your high frequencies, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 cycles, are going to be able to be transferred because of that speed of the reading of the vibration. The condenser mic will hear the overtones in your flutes, your woodwinds, your strings, the top of the piano, you know, the, the high overtones in there, to get that presence of the sound that you're looking for, that reality, that real sense. You need those high, high frequencies because those high overtones are what gives you the presence that you're in the room because you hear them in the room. But if I can't transmit those high frequencies through the microphone, through the mixing device, to the speakers, but you don't hear them in there, so you don't get that sense of presence. So that's why it's important for you to capture those. And it's important for you to have a microphone that actually hears them. The condenser mic will hear those high frequencies, but it is very sensitive. So if I was to put a condenser mic in front of a trumpet, like this distance away from the bell, it would distort that mic because of the sound pressure level coming out of the trumpet. Who would you rather have play next to your ear, a trumpet play next to your ear, or a violin? The violin. Right, because it, it's a lot quieter sound to be so close to your ear. But you put a trumpet next to your ear, you could actually have pain. The condenser microphone, here's your high end, but it's a microphone you need to be careful of what you put it in front of. But also, I can take this condenser microphone, and I can put that condenser microphone in front of a trumpet if it has a pad selection. And the pad says, I am going to pad this loud volume down so that it doesn't distort the microphone preamp. This a little switch, I could attenuate it, which means lessen it in intensity, by 18 or 20 decibels. 18 or 20 decibels is a lot. On, on that microphone that I showed you last week, the 414, that has a selection of, I think it's 7 12 or 18 decibel pad, which is very nice. So you need to employ a pad with a condenser microphone if you're going to put it on an instrument that has a heavy sound pressure level. Yeah, well, let's look at a beautiful condenser mic. This, in my mind, would be a condenser microphone that is pretty much absolutely as perfect as you could get if you could call anything perfect. What this chart is... It's a frequency response chart. You see it underneath the polar pattern circles there? See the circles where it's got the polar pattern drawn? Okay, just underneath that, you've got these lines, and you've got a dark line going through, and then falling off towards the right, correct? That dark line is on the zero on your VU meter, meaning zero volume, 285 nanowebers per square meter, or whatever, meaning so much volume. Remember we discussed that zero is X amount of volume, it's not no volume. Remember, 440 on the piano is a reference pitch for the piano, so zero VU is a reference for volume. It's this much volume, X amount of volume. All right, well, so now, that is saying that if you put 20, a 20 hertz signal lower than that piano into this microphone at zero VU, it will come out at zero all the way up to a 20,000 hertz signal at zero VU, it will come out at zero, no fluctuation in between, straight line across. doesn't dip at 500 because of this component or raise at uh, 2,500 because of this device or whatever, or this structure. None of that. Straight across. That is about as perfect as you can get in a microphone. I've never seen one like that. The thing about the microphone, everybody, is that that is your first order of business. If the microphone doesn't hear it, you don't have it. You can buy a $500,000 Neve or SSL mixing board, and you can have the big Pro Tools $20,000, $30,000 system. And if you go to Radio Shack and buy a $100 microphone, 
that is what you're going to get. In essence, if you don't catch it, you don't have it. So whatever you do after catching it, it'll make a difference. You don't have it. 